protect your DNA. BioPQQ can promote formation of new mitochondria. InfoWarsStore.com Today we're going to go right to Dr. Jerome Corsi. He's InfoWars Washington Bureau Chief. He has some very important breaking news about an executive order from President Trump that is going to do a great deal to shut down the waste and inefficiency that has to be done in terms of cutting down the size of government, but also this important st uh, study that he's done, this article about the fraudulent funding of Obamacare. We have to understand the Congressional Budget Office is the Democrats' secret weapon to try to shut down any reform of Obamacare, telling people how many individuals are going to lose their insurance coverage. But you have to understand that Obamacare only works for these people who are going to lose their insurance coverage, according to the CBO. It only works because of fraud and because of illegal funding of Obamacare. Now, Dr. Corsi broke this down in an article a couple of weeks ago on InfoWars. This is something that the investors who were defrauded in order to make this happen have been talking about for quite some time. Now it is beginning to get traction. And along with the traction, it is getting ridiculed. So I want to go to Dr. Corsi because he's broken this down in a more detailed article on InfoWars.com today that lays out all of the information from a CPA that used to be part of a large accounting firm that was auditing Fannie and Freddie. So joining us now is Dr. Jerome Corsi. Thank you for joining us, Dr. Corsi. Uh, great pleasure to be back with you. Thank you. Now, tell us about this uh, article that you got here. We had a lot of pushback because this got some uh, investors who've been defrauded, started talking about this article. Then Fox News picked it up. Then we get the ad hominem attacks from people in the press. We had the Washington Enquirer come out and uh, refer to you and spend a lot of time in the article doing an ad hominem attack on you as a birther or, uh, author in terms of the book, but not going through the actual documents, dismissing the fact that we had any proof. So now you've put down detailed information going back with the assistance of the CPA to show what happened in the books and to show that we're not making this up. We've got the information there. It's real. We now have a hashtag out there called hashtag Fannygate where people are talking about this, especially the people who've been defrauded. But of course, all of America is being defrauded by this, not just those investors, aren't they? Well, that's right. I mean, the uh, what happened last Friday was that uh, Maria Bartiromo tweeted out about uh, the articles we're writing, specifically the investors wrote up a, uh, a detailed report uh, that actually just w summarized the articles that we've been publishing in InfoWars. Maria Bartiromo picked that up and went on the, tweeted it, and then went on the air with it on Sunday. Well, on Friday, the Washington Examiner called me up and did an interview, and they decided to do a hit job saying we didn't have proof the Treasury was diverting the money from Fannie Freddie to uh, pay the Obamacare insurance subsidies for low-income people that Congress had not appropriated the money to fund. Well, so what we've done now today is uh, we have an article running that in which I just decided, okay, we've been called on this. Let me show the Washington Examiner. They don't know what they're talking about. And I worked with one of the CPA examiners from one of the major firms who had audited an outside auditor for Fannie and Freddie. And we put together this article where we went into the Treasury reports, uh, specifically for 2013, and showed how um, in the report they account for what they call the net worth sweep gains and losses on the GSEs, government sponsored entities, which are Fannie and Freddie. And uh, the documentation makes it absolutely clear that Treasury started receiving the first of these sweeps. They would, Remember, they're confiscating all the profits out of Fannie and Freddie. The investors who own stock aren't getting paid. That's right. They're, they're not robbing Peter to pay Paul. They're robbing Fannie and Freddie to pay Obama and pay for Obamacare. Yeah, and the money starts in, in March of 2013. And Treasury recognizes how big this is going to be, that it's going to be $130 billion that they're going to get. And that's minimum. It actually turned out to be $260 billion. And what we did is we went to the Treasury annual reports, all the financial data in 2013. And you can see that in March 2013, uh, the Treasury begins receiving money from Fannie and Freddie. And there's, you know, booking it. 
as revenue coming in from the GSEs, their government-sponsored entities. Uh, and the Treasury figures out they're going to get about $130 billion in 2013 from the net worth sweep. The net worth sweep was uh, Treasury had decided to take out all the earnings of Fannie and Freddie and not pay the private investors anything, just stole it. Mm -hmm. Okay, now what the Washington Examiner was saying is we couldn't prove that that money went into Fannie and it went into Obamacare. But yet we did an analysis of it and we showed how Treasury put this money into a construction building fund and then transferred it out into the accounts established for Medicare and for health in general in the accounts of the Treasury and their and their expenditure accounts. So we were able to mirror all this data and show that the money came into Treasury, the net worth sweep from Fannie and Freddie. They put it into their general fund account. Then in their expenditures, they allocated it to a construction account and shifted over to the two line items in the Treasury expenses that were earmarked to provide Obamacare money. Wow. So we have wow. a complete accounting analysis and documented it out of the Treasury reports, which, you know, which is CPA. Uh, analysis of this, which I think is ironclad, yes. and I think it makes it absolutely clear that the money was, you know, the Obama administration. See, the problem was, the Obama administration had these insurance subsidies in Section 1402, which meant that poor people, low income, couldn't pay for the insurance that Obamacare required them to get. So Obamacare said, "Well, we'll, we'll give you a tax subsidy, and you'll be able to pay for that." Uh, Congress did not appropriate any money for Section 1402. So Obamacare had no way to pay the insurance companies the subsidy between what the insurance required under the Affordable Care Act cost and what the low-income people could afford to pay. And if they couldn't meet that subsidy, it meant Obamacare was bankrupt because the insurers would be having to give away the insurance without getting the full premium because the low-income people couldn't afford it. Now, that was a huge problem. When the Treasury recognized this in 2012, they began scrambling, and they found this money in Fannie and Freddie, and they started stealing it, reallocating it to pay the insurance subsidy. The problem was Congress did not appropriate any money to fund Section 1402, and a district court case told uh, ultimately the Health and Human Services they couldn't use money appropriated by Congress for another purpose to apply here. So Treasury did it all on the sly. Mm -hmm. They did it all through you know the bookkeeping that we identified. They did it in defiance of Congress and in defiance of the courts. And then they did it uh, in defiance of the investors as well. I mean, this is outright theft. And it defines the Constitution because yeah. the federal government isn't supposed to be funding itself. That's supposed to all come from Congress. When Congress tells the executive branch you can't have the money, Congress doesn't expect the investment, you know, the executive branch to go find it somewhere else or to go steal it from Fannie and Freddie and spend it anyway. I mean, How did they justify outrageous. this, Dr. Corsi? How did they justify this uh, net sweep that they took out of there? I mean, this sounds like civil asset forfeiture and the war on drugs. Uh, well, how did they justify it? That's another thing that? I'll explain it too. In some future articles, what they did was they said that Fannie and Freddie were in financial trouble in 2012, and they didn't want the you know, taxpayers to be stuck with another bailout. So they, they were just going to basically start taking over Fannie and Freddie. They were going to begin by taking all the earnings. Okay, now, it wasn't <laughs> true. Fannie and Freddie were actually in such good shape, they paid the Treasury $260 billion. The Treasury, again, fixed the books to say that Fannie and Freddie were in dire condition in 2012, ended the uh, agreement, the preferred stock agreement where this, the usual shareholders, the private shareholders would have gotten paid and instead confiscated by Treasury all the earnings. I mean, it's just outrageous what they did. Well, yeah, they were in okay, dire I mean, shape because you had the Treasury Department embezzling money from the investors. Yeah. <laughs> They were investing money for the investors. They were applying it to pay Obamacare. They were not telling the public that without Congress appropriating the money for the subsidies in Section 1402, 
that Obamacare was bankrupt. And this was in 2012, 2013. Hmm. But by stealing what amounted to $260 billion, billion, from the investors that should have been paid out in dividends or retained by Fannie and Freddie as capital, working capital, what happened is that uh, the uh, Treasury confiscated this money. The investors got nothing. Treasury, through this accounting ledger domain, you know, tricks, transferred it over into an Obamacare account and didn't announce to the American people that they were doing it. So they paid HHS paid the 1402 subsidies to keep Obamacare going with Fannie Freddie money that was stolen from the investors. Just amazing. Just amazing. Now, the, the group that has put this out is Investors Unite. The hashtag is Fannie Gate. And, uh, of course, there is pushback against this whenever we show that out there. But now you've put out a detailed article. People can find this at Infowars.com. The title of the article is Confirmed. Treasury says Obama stole from Fannie and Freddie, investors to fund Obamacare, and you have put a detailed uh, accounting analysis in that article so they can't say this is fake news, that we're making this up. You document this meticulously. As you point out, this is an ironclad uh, exposition of where, how they took this money, how they stole it fraudulently, illegally, in defiance of Congress, in defiance of the judiciary, in defiance of the Constitution. Everything about Obamacare is a fraud, and we need to understand this as we look at the uh, congressional scoring, the Congressional Budget Office, as they score this and say this is going to be really bad for people who don't have insurance, we have to understand they never had it without fraud and deception. I want to move from this article now, Dr. Corsi, in the time that we got left to this uh, new announcement that, was, uh, that came out this afternoon. You got this about an hour or so before it hit. Uh, tell us about that coming from the Trump administration. Well, the, I got sent an uh, email from the White House about 3.30 um, this afternoon that uh, President Trump, as soon as the uh, cabinet meeting was over, about 4.30, was going to sign this executive order. It's a comprehensive plan for reorganizing the executive branch. And this executive order, uh, President Trump gives uh, the OMB, which is the Office of Management and Budget, uh, 180 days. So they've got, what, six, six months, months. Mm -hmm. to figure out how they're going to dramatically cut back the federal government. The order requires them to determine what departments can be closed, what agencies can be closed, and what functions can be combined in order to reduce staff. This will be one of the biggest reductions in force that the federal government ever undertaken in modern times. And it will, it, it, uh, we got it an hour before President Trump signed it. So we had the, you know, an advanced look at this that came out from uh, one of the, one of the um, people in the executive office who works with us to try to give us heads up on what's about to be released by the press office. Well, that's huge. And that shows that Donald Trump really understands what the problem is. We've got a bureaucracy that is metastasizing and multiplying. If we go back to, Thomas Jefferson's second inaugural, he said, by eliminating useless offices, we've been able to eliminate all internal taxation. And that's the type of thing that has to happen. Government cannot grow indefinitely. This thing has become like uh, some kind of science fiction blog, and uh, it, it just continues to grow and grow. You have to cut down and consolidate the waste. You have to cut down these unnecessary offices that have, that have been there. And I think that's very, very important that he's going to have them come up with a six-month plan to do that. And also, uh, these exe the executive branches, we're talking about you know, the Environmental Protection Agency, the State Department, the Department of Justice, all these departments are packed with Obama and Clinton supporters, leftists, who are doing everything they can to block, oppose, resist, um, to destroy, destruct President Trump's agenda. Mm -hmm. And so by getting rid of these functions, these agencies, maybe firing, closing whole agencies. I mean, I'd love to see a recommendation that we don't need the Department of Energy or we don't need the or Department commerce. of Education. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Or commerce. But, Go back to education. You know, that was what Ronald Reagan said he was going to do. It was created by Jimmy Carter. It was less than four years old. He could have killed that thing. Like I've said many times, Rosemary's baby, he could have killed it in the crib instead of they fed it and nurtured it till it became many times larger. 
I think it's very important to see Donald Trump moving against this ever increasing bureaucracy and knowing exactly that's the heart of the problem. You've got you, you can't you've got to drain the swamp by getting rid of these uh, imperial permanent positions of part of the bureaucracy. And all these people in the bureaucracy do is sit there all day long and make rules, which is essentially they yeah. become little legislators. Yes. You know, they don't report to anybody in the Congress or and they make up their own rules, which then get promulgated in the federal register. And, you know, this is another way to essentially reduce taxes because yes. these regulations are all enormously expensive for the, the private net economy result of, to... of this permanent bureaucracy is that we have not only taxation without representation, but we have legislation without representation. That's so important. We look forward to your article breaking that down. Dr. Jerome Corsi joining us. Thank you so much, Dr. Corsi. Great pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you. This is one of the biggest secrets out there. The missing link of why our ancestors, whether you were in Africa or ancient Albion, which is England today, why our ancestors were so much stronger. I mean, there are huge archeological reports, all sorts of anthropology studies, you can look them up for yourself, that show that humans, just an average farmer of 10,000 years ago in England, was stronger than Olympic athletes today. In the final equation, everyone knows our modern society has lost its vitality. The sperm counts are down like 90%. People are falling apart. They're totally depressed, they're unhappy. What is going on? Every ancient culture was obsessed with what I'm about to reveal to you. Today, we call it bone broth. And for thousands of years, our ancestors enjoyed its benefits before it became lost to our modern diets of processed junk. That's why I'm so excited to announce the product that is undoubtedly the jewel in the crown of InfoWars Life products, Caveman. We lost our vitality because we just ignored the ancient traditions. Everyone knew that you used all the parts of the animal. You used the skin to cover yourself or for shelter. You used the meat for sustenance, the fat for cooking, but you used the bones for strength. We are now introducing Caveman by InfoWarsLife.com, the ultimate in true paleo nutrition with bone broth, turmeric root, chaga mushroom, and seven total primal superfoods in a single great tasting formula. The bone is so amazing. From the outside structure full of minerals and key cofactors to the marrow that produces the blood for the body. This is the engine of the life essence. I've made a lot of important points here, but this is the one you need to research for yourself because it's so key. High quality bone broth helps support healthy muscles and connective tissue, while the active compounds in turmeric do battle on the cellular level and help fight free radicals. And collagen is essential to aid healthy tendons, ligaments, and muscle tissue. This is a absolute win-win. You get an amazing product produced right here in America. You support InfoWars and all we're doing to promote freedom and the restoration of our republic and promotion of freedom worldwide. The journey towards better health and Giving our bodies these amazing compounds that God created starts at InfoWarsLife.com. Three years in the making, incredible research, and the very best ingredients. I'm Alex Jones, and I may not be a caveman, but compared to these trendies out there in the street, I'm as close as it gets. Join me at InfoWarsLife.com and get your caveman formula today.